Hey guys, working on this deuce, getting it ready to go. Um, doing another hub. I'm doing rears, and I have not done a video on rear hubs yet. A lot of people have asked about a video on it in the past. Um, I'm gonna kind of do a two part here. I'm gonna do a tear down and then an assembly and two separate videos because this thing only records for 38 minutes and 48 seconds, even with the memory card in it. So, um, I'm not going to show you like cleaning the hub out and packing it with grease because I've already shown you that on another video before. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the important stuff because the important stuff is all that's important, right? So what we've got here is our handy little um, camera clamp thing. A big Haas 110 volt, one inch drive antique Ingersoll Rand impact. Love that thing. It's heavy, but if you're not careful it will snap these wheel studs off and it'll do the same thing on the five ton wheel studs no problem so if you don't have one of those um i mean if you got something else that's suitable fine but try to find one of those they should be relatively inexpensive uh if you got a pneumatic then of course who cares as long as you've got enough air to run it but if you're still taking your tires off by hand you got to do something dude because that is that is discouraging you from doing proper maintenance on your truck you need to get something that makes it easy to take the tires off and on with so you need your three quarter inch drive breaker bar your 8.3 inch socket a couple of pry bars a long screwdriver a brass drift a hammer uh three eighths impact with a three quarter socket and you need parts now we've got new rear outer hub seals which i will show you in the assembly video how those go together and we've got new wheel cylinders. Those came in from Big Mike. They came in this morning. Um, so now I've got the rest of the ones to do the truck. I've already done the two fronts. So um, that's what I was waiting on to do the rears. Now as you see, I've already got the rear uh, cap bolts off. And a little bit of gear oil came out. So keep that in mind. The rears are different from the fronts. When you take the axle shaft out, gear oil is going to come out. And uh, I'll show you why how that's constructed and, and how it all works and why these things get gear oil in the bearings when they're not supposed to um, anyway look at the, look at how nice these thimbles are I mean this truck I mean is really it's an 87 but the damn thing is like almost new uh, it has been serviced before okay I've, I've established that because everything I've taken apart so far and everything I can see has had orange silicone on it um, yeah and they came with gaskets not orange silicone and look at the trending cap there orange silicone so this thing has been serviced before at least once which is good uh, so let's put you in the holder here and we'll go to tearing down this thing it really isn't uh, a whole lot to it I just want to make sure you can see kind of what's going on here uh, so it is kind of a good thing to have roll of these blue shop towels around. Uh, you take this shaft out, it's going to be kind of oily, of course. See there's some grease on it. Yeah, because that seal is leaking. So, to me, I'll stand the axle shaft up somewhere, and it will stand up on its own as long as nobody hits it. That way, any oil that's on the shaft will drain down and collect in the uh, in the dish down there, so you don't get oil all over the floor or something. And so you see this orange silicone here. That is not supposed to be there. Um, that is from where the silicone squeezed out inside here when they put it back together and it ended up coming off this orange silicone is not gear oil resistant. If you want to use uh, silicone on this, what you need to use is gear oil specific silicone and I will show you what you need for that. Now, uh, I'm going to clean some of this oil off here. All right. So this is your outer hub seal, this thing with all little lines on it. That is the original OEM type, which I like, but they're almost impossible to get anymore. Uh, what you get now is the new star ones, and they look like this. They got uh, gold colored metal and no striations. 
on the outside. See what all these little things are? Um, is actually like little spring fingers, and they push uh, this rubber lip down onto the bearing race in there. I'll show you how that all works in a minute when we get it apart. So, see this tab? This one was used before, but it's not now, and now this one is. So, you have to put apart and service. Good thing. So, let's take our screwdriver. It's just an old Stanley screwdriver. I don't care about and I use for this. Bend it up a bit. Now, uh, you can reuse these lock tabs as long as you can get, generally you want to use a fresh tab. Like if I put it back to the same place, I could use this tab next time and it has not been used. I don't want to worry about this one or that one. Uh, so as long as you can get a fresh one, you don't want to reuse one that's already been bent because they get ripped, they, they crack, they break off. Uh, so now we we'll use a three-inch eight-point socket. Actually got that on there pretty tight. Sockets start to get stretched uh, from all the use. I don't know if you can see that. This <laughs> socket is going to have to be replaced sooner or later. But it still works for now. So there's our lockering, or lockering, our nut, outer lock nut. We're going to take our tab off. spindle here goes directly into the differential and into the tube. So gear all comes down this just like any other axle would that has oil hubs. Now what happens is you get gear oil that's pooled in this cavity around the seal in the end of the axle shaft cap. And if this seal the lip on it wears um, or your silicone that should be in this keyway goes out where the seal is moving around because your preload isn't right, then you end up getting gear oil through the seal into the bearings inside and it washes the grease out. Now all you've got is this lip here that pushes against the bearing race and uh, and that's what seals it. So it, it, you don't have a lot of slack to mess with. Pull the seal off. And you see there is still grease. So it's not that bad. Um, Yeah. A little bit of gear oil on the inside of the seal, but that actually may just be a separated grease. We'll see in a minute once we pull this thing off. How it looks inside. Okay. So once you get this far, you can see what I was talking about where um, 
you've got your bearing uh, cage and roller assembly, and then you've got the race. Now, you should be able to get your roller bearing assembly out. Yeah, that actually still looks really good. That wasn't leaking. If that was leaking, none of that grease would be there. And it would all be inside the drum. Um, so the seal, your lip, um, it seals against this shiny surface right here, which is the outside edge of your race. So when you've got your seal on there, if you've got, I don't know, 20 thousandths of movement, you maybe even 10 thousandths, I, I don't know at what spec, honestly, it starts leaking, but if it's too loose, it will cause it to leak because you're just pushing a rubber lip against that. You're not actually interlocking anything or, or you don't have a piece of metal going through the seal and sealing on the lip. It's just a, just a touch, touch bit. Um, and then your keyway right here, that's the main place most of them leak. Um, the military used to put a, it looks like it's in here, a piece of cork in the keyway right here. And what happens what's supposed to happen is the locating tab on the back of this seal let me get that in frame there this locating tab it presses up against that cork in the keyway there and that's supposed to seal it um that really doesn't work very well scooter go no I'm, I'm busy dude um what I usually do is omit the cork altogether I don't I don't deal with the cork um I will fill this keyway with silicone, but mind you, it all has to be very clean. Yeah, see that? It's just a little either piece of rubber or a piece of cork. I think this is cork. Yeah, that's old cork. See that? So, the hard part is getting it to seal. Um, that, that's the biggest, the biggest part of getting one of these things done properly is getting it back together and actually having this seal, uh, seal well. Because you can do all this work and pack it with fresh grease and set your brakes and all that and get your whole drum and the inside of your uh, everything and, and your shoes nice and clean and your brakes adjusted. I don't know if I ever said that. This dog is bothering me. Um, and if you take it on your first test drive and it leaks like a sieve, it's going to immediately coat everything inside your brake drum with grease and gear oil again. So you'll have to do it all over again and you may not get 10 miles out of it. That is really frustrating because it's a lot of work to do this. So um, what I do is I use lots of brake clean and make sure this keyway is clean as a whistle. No grease residue whatsoever before you put your outer bearing back on, um, which is fun after you've packed the outer bearing and it's got grease all over it. Because um, of course the grease is gonna wanna touch your RTV you've got in there, right? So yeah, it's, it's a pain. Uh, you've gotta get like the inside of the bearing raised clean and leave the outside with grease all over it and try to put it on without getting grease inside of it. It's, it's stupid, uh, but I'll show you guys that later. Um, Luckily, this is a, I've got some of the same grease that we're using here, so I'm not going to have to get it all completely clean as a whistle. Put a little bit more grease in it. Um, let's pull this off and see how the inside looks. And it helps to back your brake shoes off. Um, but You got skinny fingers, you can get your fingers in just beside the wheel cylinder shield inside of the drum and use that to pick the back up. Uh, so you, because if you drop it, you drop the drum when it comes off, the bearing rays can land on the threads on your spindle and ding the threads and then you gotta deal with that. Yeah. So that all looks great. Uh, there's some brake dust, but I don't see any signs of actual leakage in there which is awesome. It's going to be a lot less cleanup for me. Um, check this new 
fill cylinder. Chances are I'm going to have to replace it. But, uh, see it just a minute here as soon as I find my pick. Oh, there it is. So, pull this drum and hub out of the way. Please, no need to. Not leaking real bad, but if it's leaking at all, replace it or rebuild it. That's that's the rule. So. Uh, and I don't think I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to now. If you own an M35 or a five-ton or an LMTV of either size or a Hemet, or an M37, or an M715, or a CUCV, whatever. If you own a military vehicle, buy a brake cleaner by the case. Don't buy it by the can. Because I generally go through a whole case of brake cleaner doing one hub service on a truck. Uh, it just And this truck isn't even that, that dirty. I may, not, I may not use a whole case. See? Uh, so we did have a little bit of grease leakage back here, you see. Um, not much. Looks like it's mixed with spider webs and brake dust, but that way that is some grease. So a little bit coming out the back past the dust seal is fine. Um, and make no mistake, gentlemen, the inner seal on this is just a dust seal. It does not seal grease or oil in, and it does not at all keep water out. If you go in water that is up to the middle of the hub, you have water in your wheel bearing and they will require being repacked. So uh, keep that in mind. I know a lot of you guys like to just put your truck out in deep water and have fun because it's neat and the truck was built for that, but it was built for that with um, an unlimited budget and people that were going to service the vehicle all the time in mind, okay? So if you don't want to do this all the time, stay out of the water, stay out of the mud. Um, just drive your truck on the street with dirt roads and trails and stuff. Try to stay out of the deep stuff. You'll be a whole lot happier to sell your truck. Um, let's see how much this crap is going on. And uh, so the reason I didn't get, I didn't show you inner hub seals, if they're not. Uh, if they're not hard or damaged, I don't replace them. And uh, it's because it's not needed, honestly. If it's just, uh, as long as the rubber is still supple, there is no reason to replace it because it does not hold anything. Good. It just keeps dust out. So, uh, waste of time and waste of money trying to replace them if you don't have to. I gotta get another can of can of break from you were wondering um, this is the part number for the wheel cylinders for big bikes uh, he sent me six of them I mean as soon as I asked I told him I needed them quick got them right out and uh, there they are it's Saturday and I've got them and the four wheel seals I don't know if you can read that the number is not important it's uh, there's only one kind of seal really for them so it's not like you can order the wrong one um, yeah. So, you know where to get those. Our sponsor is a Big Mike. And 
Don't forget about the guys over at Rapco as well for the paints and stuff. Uh, all their information is in my description box below this video. Appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Um, catch you later, guys. The next one will be me showing you how to put this back together and actually get the thing to seal. So stay tuned. Stop, you turd. It will not stop recording. My finger has grease on it and it won't read it. Oh, you shit ass.